is the uh, fourth Sunday here, and so we wanted to take a little time and do something called Heel Talk. Instead of Real Talk, we're going to call it Heel Talk. And so on this first video, we're going to kind of tell our story of how we got into healing ministry. And uh, I wouldn't say that we emphasize healing because Jesus emphasized healing. So I believe we want to shout the things he shouts uh, and whisper the things maybe he's whispering. We don't want to major on the minors, right? And so 222 verses out of 666 verses in Mark have to do with healing stories. And so Jesus really emphasized it. And so I guess for me, you know, I had to write a paper in seminary. And, um, and I had to type out that paper at like 3 a.m. in the morning. Okay, this is, yeah, this is before like the, the you know, the Microsoft Word and all this stuff. Yeah, I would handwrite them. It was so bad. And I, I would hand them to Mary. <laughs> and if there was an error, it had to print it out, mm -hmm. a line at a time. So I had to go back and redo it. So yeah. Those were nightmares on those, those 30. Those were the days. Yeah, on those 30 page <laughs> papers, those were nightmares. Anyway, so I had to do a paper and I chose healing. And um, I, was, I just kind of just parroted back kind of the religious stuff of the books I was reading. You know, healing is a mystery, God is sovereign, who can understand it? You know, when he heals, you know, he's got his reasons. When he doesn't, if it be thy will. And so I just kind of came to those same conclusions and, um, you know, came to the same results I was getting. Basically, no one was getting healed. I think a real turning point for me, there was two. Um, one uh, was going uh, in seminary, going to the Brownsville Revival. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a guy down there named Michael Brown, and he was brilliant, and is brilliant. And um, he's, a, uh, he's a Messianic Jew. He's got a PhD in Semitic languages. I think he's fluent in like multiple Semitic languages, even like Ugaritic and mm -hmm. Akkadian, like all these ancient languages. Impressive. Very brilliant, but also very spiritual. Love the Lord. And so he had a 16 part series on healing that I just devoured. And so it was kind of began kind of changing some of the internal furniture in me uh, mm -hmm. know, at that time. And then when we were on staff at a church, there was these two guys, uh, Mike and Bobby Todd. And mm -hmm. so they had uh, very thick Southern accents. <laughs> they didn't have the formal education that I had, and they also didn't have the pride and unbelief that I had. And so here they were, they were hairdressers, and they would just minister to people in the chair. And so people were getting healed, and I would have theological debates with them. I just thought they were so wrong on so many things, but they were seeing results in healing, and we were seeing nothing. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was like my arguments just got sillier and sillier. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of, you know, I'm seeing these guys just working with just the simplicity of faith. Mm -hmm. I'm hearing some intellectual things from... Um, from Michael Brown, and uh, kind of right in the middle of all this, Mary kind of has a crisis of faith, let's just call it that. Why don't you tell about that? Yeah, do you want me to tell the, about the altar? Yeah, nobody? yeah. Okay, so <laughs> we so we went to a church where during worship... We're on staff at a church, In yeah. the middle of worship, all the staff would come up, and there would be a time where people could come up for prayer. And, um, man, we were... For healing prayer. Yeah, for healing prayer specifically, and other needs too, but... Anyway, so months went by, and I told Joe, I'm like, man, nobody is getting healed. Like, the Bible is either real or it's not real. Like, what, what I'm reading in here, if it's not happening and it's not real, it's a waste of my time. Like, why am I even doing this? And so I just kind of had a crisis of faith, and I'm just like, if this isn't real, we're wasting our time. But if it's real, we need to see it. And Jim's like, shh, don't tell anybody. I'm like, I'm on staff here. You're going to get me in trouble with this kind of stuff, right? <laughs> Um, so yeah, so that, that's kind of where it all started for us is we just, we got tired of praying for people and nothing happening. They would come back week after week with the same sickness. So. And we jokingly say, you know, we would pray for them and we were catching their sicknesses yeah. and they, they were getting worse and it was, it was just a discouraging yeah. time. And so we're trying to kind of go for it in the middle of all that. And then, uh, so I'm, so I'm listening to Michael Brown, my, my thoughts are getting changed and uh, someone hands us an Andrew Womack uh, cassette tape, if that tells you how long ago. Mm -hmm. So it was probably like 98. Yeah, a little, little intercessor. A little intercessor, Elaine, Elaine Appleby. Yeah. And uh, she says, I think you're going to like this. I thought, oh my gosh, I got so many tapes to listen to. You know, I'm reading so many books. Of course, they're doing me no good except me, filling me with pride. <laughs> and it was called, uh, it's a done deal. It was part of an album called um, You've Already Got It. <clears throat> it had a picture of a dog chasing its tail, trying to get what it's already got. Mm -hmm. And so Andrew began to teach, you're not trying to get God to heal you. He's already said yes to healing. Mm -hmm. You've already got healing on the inside. It's a matter of releasing it, not trying to pry it from God's hands. That, that was the first we had ever heard of that. Nobody ever told mm -hmm. us that we already had it. We were, I mean, floored. I remember the day that I listened to that, that whole series. I just, I was angry and happy at the <laughs> same time because nobody ever told us that we already had it. We don't have to try to get it. 
Yeah, and so that was such a, such a paradigm shifter for us. I think, I don't even know how many times we listened to it. It was like my head, mm -hmm. my spirit was getting it. My head, it was like, does not compute. I could not get the fact that, hold on, I don't have to be good enough. I don't have to earn it. I don't have to fast. Mm -hmm. Jesus already did it all. I just have to believe it. Yeah, it was like, simple. Simple. It was too simple, you know, because the, the, the papers I was writing in seminary weren't simple. I, they were, had all no. these complicated explanations no. of why it wasn't happening. And you read in the Bible, it's like and they believed and received. Yeah. And so um, so Andrew really started kind of getting us in. Just, he, and he just, I feel like he just aligned us. He yeah. got us right to that door. And we we're beginning to see a couple of healings here and there. You know, listen, you're never going to see consistent healing if you don't believe it's always God's will to heal. Mm -hmm. If you don't even know if God's going to agree with you, how can you have faith? How can you be fully convinced? How can you be expecting? You can't expect something if you don't know what God's going to do, right? And so, but if you know what he's already done and said yes to, mm -hmm. you know, all of his promises are yes and amen. So God said yes, and it's our job to look in that promise, look at what Jesus has done, and give that amen with our life. And so we kind of got birthed out of the church. It was like we just didn't fit in that, uh, in that environment that we were in. The way we were responding to that environment was kind of shrinking our hearts. And so we kind of got birthed into the real estate world and, uh, and marketing world. And so we're up there kind of in the wilderness. And it's just us and Jesus and this big house with big land with a small rent. Uh, that was a miracle story. And it was like kind of like God just hit us away, you know, and we just fell in love with him again. All the reasons we got into ministry, love God and love people. God just kind of brought all that uh, back to us and got so us. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna like pause just for a second because you're saying we're up there, so we we had moved and left the church, like the building. Thank you. And so yes, now we're in a different location on all these acres of land in a place I did not want to be, but isn't that just like God? He always gives you what you need, not what you think you need, and then later you're like, oh my gosh, I needed this so much. I could not have grown in the places I needed to grow if he had not put me in this place. So ahead. we were up in Michigan in the God-forsaken yeah. frozen tundra. We are not wearing our Michigan colors. We just happen to be wearing these things. This is glory, and this is... Revelation. And so, uh, <laughs> anyway, so, um, so we're up in Michigan, and we're listening, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're going for it. And so we realize oh, we are fully convinced it's God's will to heal. Mm -hmm. We still had some things to get rid of. And so we're, we're like any, any family gathering, if anyone had a limp, like we're praying for them, a mm -hmm. stiff neck. So like family's like starting to avoid us because we're like so radical with it. That's a real story. That's true. We're not just saying that. Like, No, yeah, we're saying it in a sentence. It was uncomfortable for a long time. Yeah, they thought we kind of lost our minds. And so our, our we did, were doing house church. We weren't really going to a church. We were... Um, we were doing house church, and so we'd watch Randy Clark DVDs about healing. In our pajamas. In our pajamas, doing house church. That's how you do it. And we would um, reenact Bible stories with the kids. So we'd read a story about the healing of the leper, and we'd wrap them up like in toilet paper. I don't know why the lepers wore toilet paper, but in our, in our house church, they did. And so one of them would be Jesus, one of them would be the leper, and they'd pray, and they'd rip it off, and then they'd be healed. Mm -hmm. And then we'd go out to eat, and we'd pray for waiters and waitresses and, uh, and try to minister to them. And it was awesome because it got to a point, I remember, where the kids, uh, one of the kids said, Dad, I got dibs in the waitress. Mm -hmm. And it was like, man, it's, it's becoming their thing now. Mm -hmm. Like, they're starting to hunger for it. Yeah. We weren't seeing the great results. We were seeing some, but we were fully convinced. Mm -hmm. And I think the big shift was I was, uh, I'm a, I, I've told the story to Zion, so anyway, it's, it's, still, it's still the truth. And so um, on my way to my office, we, I, my real estate office, internet wasn't working, so I go to Panera Bread. And I was going to use their internet there. So I get out of the car and I heard this guy yelling. And I'm like, what is that noise? And so there's this old guy and he's crippled. He's hunched over and he's got a cane. And uh, so I say, hey, sir, what's going on? He said, hey, can you tell me where 24 mile road is? I'm like, well, you just got off at the bus stop at 23 in Gratiot. So you've got a one mile walk that way. He says, thank you. Inch, 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 inch. So he's inching. His, I'm like, this guy's got a long walk. And so I thought, I'm just going to drive this guy. So I drive him up there. And I'm, uh, I'm sitting in the car, and I, um, he goes in the, I drive him to the bank. He goes in the bank. So I call up Mary. I'm like, Mary, I think we got one. You know, like, wake up the intercessors in China. Like, I think this guy's going to get healed, you know. And I think well, he like, really did say, wake up the intercessors I was in joking, China. but, yeah, I, I, you know how I am. I'm a little silly sometimes. And so I'm like, Mary, I think we got one. You know, I said, all right, we're yeah, praying, you know. Praying. And so I'll just tell you how the story went. So I'm listening to a CD by Bill Johnson, and it was about impartation. You know, where Paul says, like in uh, 1 Corinthians, um, maybe it's Romans 1, he says, I long, I long to come and impart a spiritual gift to you. Mm -hmm. He talks about in Timothy 
how uh, the grace in his life, there was an uh, impartation given to Timothy for spiritual gifts of the laying out of hands and the prophetic words. And so kind of how we look at impartation is you already have everything in Christ, but God's given different graces for different people, mm -hmm. apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. He's given a grace in their life. So I feel like it's like you have that fire already. You have all the fire you're going to need, but um, there can be an accelerant. There can be gasoline poured on by an impartation. Mm -hmm. So Bill's teaching on impartation. I'd never heard of it before. And so I'm sitting at the bank in the parking lot, and he's, uh, he prays a prayer for impartation. And I was so hungry. I said, God, I, I don't know what this is, but I'm, I'm going to get it. And so I put one hand on the speaker of the car door. I put another hand on the CD. This is like 2007, so CDs back then. And I just started praying in tongues. And I saw there's people walking out of the bank looking at me like I was weird. I'm like, I don't care. And I didn't feel anything, but I'm like, I got something. I got something. So this guy gets back in the car. His name's Lonnie. And so I'm going to drive him back to the bus stop. And uh, he starts sharing with me how he's having an affair with this 20-year-old on the bus. He's like in his 60s. I'm like, oh, Lord, i got to change the subject. So I just burst out. I said, um, hey, my wife and I pray for people, and they get healed, which was a lie or a declaration of faith, depending on how you look at it. And I said, is there anything I can pray for you about? And he, um, he holds up his cane, and he says, uh, or no, first of all, he says, how about the obvious? I'm an alcoholic. And I thought, man, I didn't even notice it. And then, then, then I could smell it after that. Mm -hmm. And then uh, he, uh, I said, well, how about your legs? And uh, I said, here's what's going to happen. I said, I'm going to pray for your, your legs. That's gonna, you're going to get healed. That's going to give you the faith to overcome the alcoholism. And I said, what do you think? And he holds up his cane and says, as long as I've got this cane, I'll be fine. I thought, oh, Lord, said, that's, not, that's not the mighty faith declaration you're looking for after you just share some good news with this guy. So I ended up just driving him home. And so we're sitting in there in front of his house. And I said, let's pray. And so he kind of holds out his hand. And so I grab his hand, kind of like a little handshake. I think I just prayed a simple prayer, something like, and the uh, legs be healed in the name of Jesus. I said, check it out. And he holds up his cane and says, as long as I've got this cane. I feel like I was operating a little bit in a gift of faith. When a gift of faith comes out, all, there's a gift of faith, but all faith is a gift. Mm -hmm. Faith comes from looking at Jesus, seeing what he's done, and it's our positive response to what he's already done. Mm -hmm. But there's a gift of faith that comes on that eliminates all doubts. It's like you don't have the ability to doubt, and then it lifts, and you're like, oh, my gosh, what am I saying, right? And so I hadn't hit that point yet. I said, here's what's going to happen. I said, get out of the car and walk. And uh, he gets out of the car, and he's hunched over, and he takes a step. And all of a sudden, his spine straightens up. He stands up straight, and he starts to oh, man, I still remember it. He starts walking normal back and forth on the sidewalk. And he comes to the car. He says, I don't think I'm going to need this anymore. Mm -hmm. I said, I don't think you are either. Mm -hmm. And he starts sprinting up and down the sidewalk. And he's waving the cane above his head. And he's yelling, I can walk. I can walk. And I thought, God, whatever we have to do to see more of this. Yeah. And so I feel like that was, it was, it was a big leap up. And it's not mm -hmm. like the floodgates opened and everyone got healed after that. We're still not at that point. Mm -hmm. But it was, it was one of those milestone markers. And... Um, you know, then we came to Zion, and, you know, healing happened on day one, you know, in our tryout. It was interesting. They, uh, they, they had two people they kind of narrowed it down to. They said the other guy was a better speaker. But they said what got me the job was our kids. And so do you want to tell that story about the kids? Oh, yeah. So at the end of the message. This is message, at our tryout for Zion, yeah. Yeah, so at the end of the message, um, we always gave the kids an opportunity to pray with us. It was always a choice. We were never like, hey, you better pray with us at the end, you know. Well, we were doing house church together, and so yeah, we were just administered like in normal. restaurants together. It was normal. We hadn't planned it. So we just said to the kids, hey, do you guys want to stay here on the front row, or do you want to help us minister to people and um, pray for healing? And they're like, oh, we're going to pray. And um, so, yeah, so they, they prayed right along with us, and I guess that's what got us the job. We didn't realize <laughs> it, but the whole church was leaning on the edge of their seats, and they'd they, they wanted a family that was moving in this because that's what mm -hmm. they wanted in their family. And like I said, it wasn't anything planned. We didn't even know anyone was looking. It was just normal for us. But it was like God had prepared us, mm -hmm. and then he'd prepared a church that was really wanting that and was really already moving in that direction. And uh, it was just a hand-in-glove fit. I want to say, too, like during that the wilderness time, I think – it, you know, I tell people it's the best and the worst of times. Our wilderness was Michigan, 32 months yeah. in the godforsaken frozen tundra. And that was, you know, we we didn't think we'd ever come back to the brick building that we all call the church because we're the church, right? Us walking temples. Um, but, you know, I, I just remember during that time the shaping and the molding and the hunger that occurred. Like, it, it wasn't even a matter of, like, we didn't give up. You know what I mean? Like this struggle of 
you know, I don't feel like that's the message that, that I want to give you today. I feel like the message is more like embrace where you are right now and just keep, keep like, um, that communion, that communion with the Lord, because that's where, you know, I, I tell people all this, the time this, that I've been saved since I was four years old, but uh, I never could actually say, I love Jesus with all my heart. When I would say that out loud, I liked Jesus a lot, but I didn't fall in love with Jesus until we had this time in the wilderness where there was no other crutches. <laughs> you know, there was, there was nobody lifting us up. There was no fanfare, you know, it was just us and Jesus. Like our family yeah. thought we lost our minds for leaving, being on staff at a church. And, um, but, but this is, this is the journey that the Lord takes us on to get where we're going and embracing that journey and, uh, not being bitter about it, but it, you know, you can ask God questions, but more than anything, he just wants you to get to know him. He just wants you to get to know him so you can fall in love with him. Like he loves you. And so I feel like out of that is where that hunger for like wanting to do what Jesus did came from. And I remember uh, when we were in Michigan, I was reading through Revelation, I mean, Genesis, <laughs> backwards. I was reading through Genesis and just about creation. And um, while I'm reading it on the dining room table, a bird comes and boom, like hits the window. And I mean, it was loud. And so I go check the window and here's this bird dead laying down. I mean, it probably had a broken neck. Oh, yeah, it's, remember its neck was yeah. like at like a 45 or 60 degree angle. Right. <laughs> it, was it was not moving. It wasn't breathing. I know sometimes they get knocked unconscious and they get up and fly away. This was not that, like this bird was dead. And so I'm looking out the window at it, you know, <laughs> on the ground. And I'm reading, I'm just reading Genesis about creation. And I, I was like, Lord, I'm going to, I'm just going to practice my faith on this bird. Like I, I'm just um, praying life and resurrection over this bird and just this creation come up and come alive again. And uh, because we have resurrection power in us, right? And so anyway, a few minutes later, the bird gets up and flies away. So that was kind of like a marking moment yeah, for me too. Absolutely. I feel like just the journey of not only healing but resurrection, and we got to start somewhere, right? We got to, yep. we just got to try stuff, and um, and then it, it's so exciting with Jesus, what He does. He loves us so much. Yeah, and that intimacy doesn't earn you favor with God. It doesn't earn you uh, healing. It just makes it a whole lot easier to receive when you know what He's like. It provokes you. I feel like it provokes you to do what Jesus did. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so, you know, faith works by love. And so when you are getting close to the Lord and you realize how much he loves you, faith comes easy, mm -hmm. right? And uh, yeah, so we're seeing these things in the Bible, what it says we can do, and uh, it becomes more believable when you know what he's like. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, yeah, so that's part of the whole fun of it. Mm -hmm. And so then uh, I'll just kind of just kind of close this little yeah, chapter here okay. in just a second. So we, um, and so May 2009, uh, my sister passed away from breast cancer. It was just a very difficult mm -hmm. time in our family. And um, we had a lot of momentum and healing at that time in our church. And so just, you know, it seemed like weekly miracles were happening outside the walls of the church, inside the church. And we were just going for it on an all-out ballistic assault. And so we went up for the funeral, and I just felt stirred by the Lord to teach on healing at our funeral. Mm -hmm. You know, and it was kind of like a line in the sand of just saying, listen, uh, I'm not going to lower the standard of God's promises to the level of our experience. And so I taught on healing at her funeral, taught on healing my first Sunday back. And it was just, Zion was so precious because it was like they were grieving with us. And it was like, they were like, hey, are we still going to go for it? Mm -hmm. And it was just this really precious time. And, uh, the, and there was this lady who came against me nasty on Facebook. And she's like, oh, if you believe in healing, then why'd your sister die? Mm -hmm. I'm like, man, what are you, like a Nazi? Like, who, who talks to people like this, you know? So I typed out a really nasty answer. And thank goodness <laughs> I did not send it. And so, uh, yeah, so self-control oh, kicked in, the fruit of the spirit kicked in after the, uh, I typed it out, but uh, anyway. And so I didn't send it, and so I was like, Lord, I really, I just need you to give me an answer. And so here's what I, um, so here's what I uh, wrote to her, and I'm just gonna ask it to you, and I think it's gonna encourage you in healing. Mm -hmm. And so I, um, I, I feel it was like a word of wisdom from the Lord. I said, you know, have you sinned since you've been water baptized? And she types back, yes. And I said, well, Romans, so let me just ask you this. I'll just talk to you as if I was saying it to you. Have you sinned since you've been water baptized? I'm guessing the answer is yes. 
Here's the thing, Romans 6 says that you were buried with Christ through baptism. You died with Christ and were buried with him in baptism. And so you died to sin, I'm sorry. You died to sin and were buried with Christ through baptism. So even though you're dead to sin, you still sin. So what's that say? It says that there's things that Jesus paid for that, there's, that we are still learning how to take hold of, but it doesn't make them any less true when we don't walk in the fullness, right? And so you're, di- you're dead to sin and yet you still sin and he paid for it fully. We're learning how to walk that out. Jesus paid for your healing, and maybe you pray and you're not healed, or maybe you have a disappointment. It doesn't mean it's any less true. It just means that we're still learning how to take hold of these things. Mm -hmm. I hear people say things like this all the time. It just shouldn't be this hard. Well, what makes it hard is the unbelief, right? If you just believe and not doubt, it only takes a mustard seed size faith. And so uh, this summer, we're going to be spending a lot of time on healing, going through uh, messages, looking at Jesus, and hopefully uprooting those, uh, those weeds of doubt and planting those good seeds of healing. And so I just want to encourage you with our, just a little bit of our story today. You say something? Well, I was going to say, I think if you feel like healing is hard, if you're starting to feel like, oh, it shouldn't be this hard, it's usually because you're trying to do it. Oh, that's good. <laughs> and not letting the Lord do it, you know? I, I think sometimes we're just we do get into that like, I've got to heal this person, when really, no, it's actually tapping into the Holy Spirit river inside of you and just releasing that healing touch from the Lord. And um, Yeah, healing's only difficult if you think you have a whole bunch to do with it. Mm-hmm. And so... Um, yeah, I mean, right. We, we live in two realities at the same time. It's when heaven and earth collides and healing happens. So we have to be, we have to be alert to the other realm. We are not just human. <laughs> We're more than human. And so when we try to do it just in human uh, ways, in human form, it just, you know, it is difficult. You feel like it's hard, and it shouldn't be. So. Well, that's really good. And so, yeah, maybe just close with this picture. Is when you're praying, a lot of you think it's just your hand praying, and you're trying to squeeze out every ounce of anointing in there. And it's like, no, 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 it's not just your hand praying. So when you're praying, you have an expectation that something's going to happen, not because you're amazing, but because Christ lives inside of you, because he already said yes. Did you see the difference? Paul said to labor to Mm -hmm. enter into that rest. What's that rest? Jesus paid for it all. I don't have to add anything to it. I just have to believe it. That's the hard work. Yeah, that, you know, if you're fasting, meditating on scriptures, all those type of things, that doesn't impress God. Mm -hmm. It just helps you get to that point of, I'm putting my full confidence, my full weight. Everything is, I'm completely dependent. I'm pushing my chips to the center of the table. I'm betting it all on what Christ has done. So when I put my hands in you, it's not just my hand. I'm expecting something to happen. And so that's the work that we do to get to that simplicity of Christ. Mm -hmm. So So do we want to challenge them to pray for somebody? That'd be good. We challenge you to pray for somebody. And so, yeah, just, so here's, well, yeah, I'm, I'm sure you're going to come across someone who's, uh, who needs prayer. Yeah. And a real easy way to do it is, uh, you, know, uh, you know, I hope this doesn't sound crazy, but mm-hmm. hey, I see that you've got something there. Would you mind if I prayed for you? And pray, and you don't have to lay hands on them if it's, you know, sometimes it's weird with a stranger. You can mm-hmm. just speak the words. Jesus did that too. But expect mm-hmm. something to happen and uh, come tell us about it on Sunday. Be healed in the name of Jesus. All right, we bless you guys. Let's pray for him. Yeah. Lord, we love you and we thank you for Jesus that you already said yes and that you paid for everything. And so we pray for an impartation of faith, an impartation of expectation for people that when they pray, something's going to happen. And uh, Lord, we just break off all those disappointments and we look fresh at what you have done and we just say yes all over again. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right, be blessed, Zion. We love you.